Um, yes, yeah, so OpenGL and C Sharp. Um, first thing is why, well, I used to play a game called Elite years and years ago with its state of the art 3D hidden line vector graphics, which is awesome. Uh, and then there was TIE Fighter, and then there was a game called Allegiance back in 2000, which is still one of the best games ever in terms of teamwork and multiplayer action. Um, and my vague, I've always wanted to make something, I'm never going to make it obviously, but something like Allegiance um, where with some graphics. So um, the other reason to learn it is. Back at university, we had enough 3D graphics cards. You write assembly language, which drove the CPU, which puts it in graphics mapped RAM, and you came up with a couple of huts like that. Um, and this was, again, guru shading. This was, again, state of the art, before you had 3D cards. Um, that's what I say. Um, then they came up with the fixed function pipeline. Um, probably everyone knows this one, where it's, you had graphics cards, and they did all this stuff for you, magically. Um, but nowadays, you have these things called a programmable pipeline with shaders inside it. Um, where you can control things like the tessellation control and geometry and vertex and fragments and do all sorts of wizardry on GPU cards these days. Um, and I kind of want to know a bit about how these worked, just for my own academic interest. Um, so for 3D graphics coding, the obvious choice is of course C++. Um, there's lots of engines out there like Ogre, do th um, an engine, uh, the Unreal Engine is now on a subscription model. Um, but it involves C++. I went back and learned some C++ and it involves building Boost and all sorts of other crap these days. And it's just like hard work, so no. Um, so I said, can I use C Sharp for this? Um, Microsoft did have something called XNA. Which is, I'm not quite sure what XNA stood for, someone might know. Um, but that was a basically a, a C Sharp wrapper around uh, DirectX. Uh, unfortunately, they killed it off. Um, Monogame came up with something and they basically replaced XNA, except they're missing a couple of crucial parts like the content pipeline to actually make it do anything at all. Um, so it still needs XNA, so that was out. Um, there's another thing called, now called Unity, which is a sort of like a game studio 3D IDE thing for putting games in, uh, which might be okay because that does that has C-sharp scripting in it, but it's kind of like, well, I'm a bit away from, a bit away from my original goal of trying to learn shaders and academic, you know, all the sort of underlying bits of it. So that might be very good to use. I have never tried it. Um, I then found something called OpenTK. Um, open Toolkit, which basically it wraps the OpenGL, which is obviously the graphic standard that lots of things use, um, Open Compute Layer, so you can do computing on the GPU, and Open AI, which is the audio library. Well, I've not come to that bit yet. Uh, it works on mono, it's on NuGet, so you can just get it into Visual Studio. Uh, and it's actually what they use in Xamarin, which is the mobile C Sharp thing um, for doing 3D graphics on there as well. Um, the other thing, of course, if you're learning, the other thing is, is OpenGL versus DirectX. Well, OpenGL is more cross platform. And you can use it on WebGL and lots of things. So I thought oh, I'd rather learn that one rather than hardcore DirectX, which also do have open source C-sharp wrappers around it. This is all open source, by the way. I should point out because um, it's on it's all free to use. Um, so if you ever used OpenGL via C? Um, OpenGL is basically a C API, and everything starts with GL. GL use program to use a shader, uh, set up your state and everything else, and then you call draw, which draws some triangles on the screen for you. Um, I'm not going to go into OpenGL because like that's a massive topic. Um, um, OpenGL via OpenTK is basically yeah, everything starts with GL dot and you've got uh, all the sort of functions available to you which is in the more sort of C-sharp style. Um, one, all the sort of GL underscore constants are made into enums for you. Um, one curiosity is the input of zero here and that's because in the original spec it is indeed a, a pointer it takes. It, it replicates that even though it's not really used as a pointer as such. Um, the other thing it has in for you is it, can you actually see that on there because it's a bit dark, which isn't bad colours, um, is that the it creates all the startup for you, so you basically have a game window, if it's called, uh, and it basically provides you three overrides, do all your loading up stuff here, every time it calls a frame it updates it, and then you have to render the frame, which starts off with the clear thing. Uh, it handles basic input from the user as well, so all the sort of stuff you can get, it's basically a nice wrapper around OpenGL and startup and everything else. Um, the other thing you need if you're doing 3D gaming, of course, is a physics engine. Um, I mentioned this here, which is not OpenTK. And there's one called Beppu Physics, which again is a, a pure C-sharp 3D engine. Uh, it handles all motion and stuff. Um, and the guy's got lots of demos for this thing, like this is a little rocket which blasts off from here, and you can see it shoots up the plane, all sorts of things. He has lots of demos. It just shows it, it actually does work. Um, so a simple demo. Uh, get out of here now into Visual Studio. So this is the basic Hello sort of OpenGL thing just to show you the bit of code, sort of here. Um, so in this one here, I've got the actual shader languages, shader code in here, which is just very simple vertex and fragment shaders, which just put things on the screen. 
um, all the data for the actual cube itself, so on and so forth. And then here you actually basically set up a couple of buffers which you send to the graphics card or OpenGL, you hope it sends the graphics card and sort it on memory there rather than sending it each time so it's faster. Uh, and then on the render, you literally say, right, use those buffers and call my draw arrays thing. Uh, you do that and it just does the obvious spinning cube like that, um, which is fairly boring. Um, I thought I'd show you what I've got so far on my, on my quest to actually make, make my game, as it were. And that's far too bit off the screen, but there we go. And this has got the physics in there, so it's constantly thrusting forward. And if you move around, it sort of takes a while to adjust its turn to it. But most crucially of all, um, it's a lot now. <laughs> as you hit the asteroid, you actually don't go through it, you go bang on it. And there we go. No, no I, haven't actually done the <laughs> I haven't actually done the reaction to it yet, and you can't shoot the asteroids yet, or anything else. Um, the actual fun part is going to be the network physics when I actually make it multiplayer, but um, yeah, we'll come to that one later on. So that's it, if you ever want to use OpenGL, uh, it's uh, ISIS MTK. There we go. Any questions? Yeah, what platforms, how portable is all this? So um, in theory, say it runs on, mon uh, runs on mono, so in theory it's Linux and Macs run it fine. Um, and I say, and I know that the Xamarin guys have, have it, do, do use it on the mobile platforms, it's integrated into their um, stuff as well, so yeah, they use MTK. Yeah, if, you look, if you look at their 3D samples, it does have the same sort of using OpenTK dot input. So OpenTK handles uh, OpenGL specs 1, 2, 3, 4, and the embedded specs 1 and 2, whatever it is. Yeah, thousands of them. So that's another thing using OpenGL rather than direct text. Cool. Thanks very much. So,